Well, welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name's Peter Waters, call sign G3OJV. I'm glad you could join me. Some good news, some good news. The first bit of good news is that it's gonna be sunny tomorrow, at least down here uh, in the south it can be sunny. So it's a chance to get out in the garden. But another bit of good news, Yesu have just announced their new cashback. So if you're interested in buying an FTDX 101, either the 200 watt or the 100 watt version, good prices. Same goes the FT991A. That's a brilliant radio and it's really got a nice discount on it. So check that one out as well. And also the FT818ND, great little QRP radio that goes from 160 meters right up to 70 cents. Good deals. Go onto our website, check the prices. We've got them in stock you might save yourself some money. There we are. Okay, that's the commercial out of the way. <laughs> um, I did promise that I'd get out in the garden and because the sun is forecast or the warm weather's forecast for tomorrow, it's a great opportunity. What I'm gonna do is to show you a very simple antenna that you can make at home in, I don't know, half an hour or an hour with very simple materials it will give you some DX performance guaranteed, provided the band's open. Basically, it's a 20 meter vertical. Very easy to put up in your own garden. You don't need anything uh, particularly special uh, to support it. Well, I'll explain that tomorrow anyway. But basically, you can get it out in the garden tomorrow with a bit of wire, a bit of kite cable. You can make yourself a vertical antenna and I guarantee if the band's open, you'll work some interest in DX. So, why don't you join me tomorrow in the garden. Let's hope that it doesn't rain, and now I'm sure it won't rain. Join me in the garden tomorrow, and we'll talk about a simple antenna that you can build in your garden. Okay, that's a deal. See you tomorrow morning. Well, it's a blue sky, the sun's out. It's quite warm, it's about 21 degrees. So, uh, we are actually coming towards our spring. <laughs> Thought it would never happen. I was talking uh, in the last video briefly about Spratic E and we are actually coming up to the time when um, we uh, will start to hear Spratic E activity. The bands to watch are 6 metres, 10 metres and 4 metres. I think 6 metres is traditionally the band that always seems to have the most uh, interest. Um, certainly last year was a lot of FT8 activity on, so you could go on six meters and think the band is uh, not open, but in fact it might be. 10 meters tends to carry more of your traditional SSB and CW traffic, at least it did last year. Who knows what's gonna happen this year, but <clears throat> it's interesting because Spradicky just pops up from nowhere at all. The band can be dead and it's also very um, specific to locations. It's like sort of shining a torch in the air. Uh, you could be working a station in Germany and get an S9 plus report and somebody 10 miles away might, e might not even be, be able to hear the German station. But because of the nature it is continually changing so when you hear a station and you're in contact with a station S9 Plus, don't assume that that S9 Plus signal <laughs> is gonna be there five minutes later. If you talk too long, you might go back and you find silence, uh, the, the conditions have changed and uh, uh, your little chance of your little spotlight with the German station has gone until next time. Interesting band. If you're thinking of uh, gearing up for a sporadic E, uh, particularly on six meters, we've put up on our website quite a wide range of six meter Yagis and vertical antennas. Some of them have been reduced quite dramatically in price. Um, you can get a two element six meter Yagi now for, a, I don't know, less than 80 pounds probably. Have a look on our website, there's a, there's a, a wide range there and uh, you might find something that uh, fits the bill. Don't forget, Spradic E will start fairly shortly and with a bit of luck it'll extend right into uh, to June, July and uh, well it's an interesting activity. 
I always remember, I, can, I mean, this, this is quite amazing. I was on um, six metres, it was about three years ago now, and I just switched on, I tuned across, and I heard a, a GM station calling CQ. And I thought, there's no way that is a GM station on six metres calling CQ. It was just a rock crushing signal. And uh, I, uh, well, I just sort of pondered a bit. I should have pressed the PTT button, I didn't. I pondered a bit. And then about 30 seconds later, I could hear this weak GM station calling CQ again at around about, I don't know, S5. And it was gradually disappearing into the, um, the noise. And that was it, gone forever. And I always wished I'd actually gone back to this GM station because I was convinced it was a fluke, a pirate or whatever. It just was too strong to be anything other than a local station. But of course, that was sporadic E for you. Right, the antenna I'm going to describe is uh, the L antenna, or at least I call it the L antenna. It's a 20 meter vertical. And as you can see from the drawing here, you've got the vertical section and then the counterpoise. Now the counterpoise, um, should not be earthed. It's about 40 centimetres above ground and that's connected direct to the sheathing of the coax. And then here you can see a simple connection diagram um, with a block, a terminal block, and you've got the coax going on one side and then you've got the antenna and the counterpoise on the other side. This is what you need for your back garden DX antenna you need some wire any sort of wire doesn't matter what wire it is any bit of wire I prefer plastic coated wire is a tip <clears throat> if you haven't got any wire go down to the local ironmongers or whatever um, if they're still open get yourself a length of twin flex pull it apart and you've got double the length it's that easy <clears throat> um, you need a length of coax as well RG58, whatever. You need a length of coax to feed the antenna. And <laughs> you need a little electrical terminal block to connect it all up together. Now for my test, I've used one of the uh, spider pole, fiberglass spider pole, uh, telescopic masks, really good, well made rugged and uh, does the job and uh, I've got the uh, the wire running up the side of the uh, pole here. I could have um, thrown a rope over a tree and hauled it up that way and then taken the wire straight down to the bottom and um, made the connection at the bottom of the tree and we were only talking about five meters of, uh, of antenna height which is pretty easy in a lot of gardens and uh, if you can't um, uh, you haven't got a tree in the garden and you haven't got a fiberglass pole then some garden canes latch, lashed together would uh, equally do the job uh, I do like the spider pole because I mean this spider pole will go up to around about um, uh, 12, 12 or 13 meters I think Anyway, what I've got here is I've got the, um, this is the, basically the wire element which is uh, 5 metres or 5.1 metres long and then here, attached to this box here, I've got a 5.1 metre wire counterpoise. Now, the counterpoise is essential, but if you're going to use a counterpoise, um, a resonant counterpoise which I've used here, do make sure it's above the ground. I've got it around about know, 40 centimetres above the ground, which for 20 metres is, is, uh, is about right. The reason I've used this box is twofold. First of all, it makes it very easy to experiment. I've got a terminal there for the um, antenna. I've got a terminal there for the counterpoise. And underneath, I've got an SO239 socket to which the coax goes and it makes it so easy to um, to experiment then. I know that uh, in this uh, <laughs> this video I'm showing you a bit of a Heath Robinson way of doing it but that's for the sort of initial setup. Um, I've also got in here a ferrite core which I've 
um, wound some coax round to form a sort of line isolator. Now, it's not absolutely essential to get it going, but I do prefer to have an, a line isolator. It just seems to make that whole antenna more docile. But anyway, I'm going to show you um, uh, a close-up now of this box and uh, the wire coming out of it. I hope the uh, camera can pick this up. This is the counterpoise wire. It's just going along the side of a, a fence. Um, and uh, I just make it off at the moment on the end of a, <laughs> a, a screw there, uh, which is uh, in the woodwork. While I'm out in the garden, I'm going to just show, show you how the, uh, the correct way to um, fasten a spider pole to stop it uh, telescoping in. Bring this section up here. You'll see I've got a hose clamp there. That hose clamp is at the bottom of the section that's telescoping in. So this section can't telescope in because the hose clamp is stopping it. What you don't want to do, what you mustn't do, is to put a hose clamp around there to try and grip it. No, that's not the way to do it. Put a hose clamp just at the base of the section that's fully telescoped out. That will stop it telescoping in. You can do that all the way up with hose clamps, which you'll get from the uh, local ironmongers. Well, that's the L antenna, as I call it. Very simple to erect and it works extremely well. Uh, if you've got a, uh, an HF transceiver, put this 20 meter L antenna up in your garden and you'll have a great deal of fun with it. And I've explained before, it's fairly easy to put a quarter wave of wire up in the air on 20 meters. We've talked about canes, my favorite spider pole. I know I keep pushing it, but it's such a lovely, lovely device. It does all sorts of things. And uh, if I was to make this more secure, I could telescope this up to 40 foot and have a nice 40 meter um, antenna. Got some other ideas as well, which I'll talk about uh, another time. But for the, for the main um, purpose of this video, this is the L antenna. Well, finally, <laughs> the best thing to do is to test the antenna, have a look at the VSWR. So I've plugged it into the uh, Elecraft K3 here, and um, we'll just uh, go into the tune mode. Um, this is the bottom of the band, by the way. I deliberately gave you the dimensions for the bottom of 20 meters, uh, which is a length of 5.1 meters. That means to say that if you want to operate up at the phone end, you just uh, trim it a bit and make it slightly shorter. So let's uh, see what. Uh, what happens. Right, there we are. Well, uh, we've got a very low SWR at the bottom of the band there. Um, what's it showing? 1.4 1 and that's without any trimming. I guess it might come down a bit more than that, but it's shown uh, 1.4 at the bottom of the band. So that's uh, basically what I expected and uh, very pleased with that. So there we are. That's the uh, back garden L antenna for 20 metres. Uh, I have had some contacts on it uh, actually over the last few days and <laughs> it works extremely well. Um, and as I said right at the outset, it's very cheap to make. Get you on the air and if you like it, well you can make a better version than I've made. So there we are. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care. Enjoy your ham radio. And I'll see you shortly. Bye for now.